Kevin. What you doing today? Hey, buddy. Uh-oh. Uh, break out the tap set, huh? No, no break the tap set. Uh-oh. That, that's what I normally do. Is uh, I just I snap those things off just left and right. Yeah, that's actually pretty common for most people. Well, and you're you're going to snap another one? Is that what you're wondering? Well, yeah, I thought we'd snap one on camera. Oh, hey, why not? Um, a 3-H. Right. So I use a 3-H drill, right? No, that would be bad. That's actually the body size of the tap. So using 3 8 uh -huh. tap... 3 8 drill is the same size. So we actually want to use what's called the tap drill. And for a 3 8 16, commonly it's a 5 16 drill. Hey guys, what's tapping? What are you doing anyway? Well, we're going to put threads in a piece of steel yeah. without breaking it this time. Oh, come on. Oh, come on. I want to snap one off in a hole. Nah. <laughs> so what we're going to use here is we're going to go ahead and drill in what Kevin's already got set up. Hopefully the right size hole. Well, you better check me. <laughs> that looks like you've got the right size hole. So let's use a 5 16 drill. So we'll pull this out of our index. Stick it in here. So we bit on the big Too side. Big. Too big. Happens. Yeah. It happens a lot. But that's okay. As long as it's not too big, we can still get by with it. So what I've done here is I'm teasing Kevin a lot. But when we drilled a 5 16 drill, it walked over a little bit, and it's about 15 thousandths oversized. That's fine for this particular application. But a lot of people, when they go to tap, they want to use this tap handle. It's not the way to do it. It's just not my favorite. If you have an existing thread in there, it's not a problem. But, you know, you can go to the tool store. You can go to a general hardware store, and you can buy these tap handles, and they are awesome. And what it allows you to do, it allows you to have a lot more control. They're collet driven, which means when you screw these up and down, they'll allow you to fit whatever size tap that you want to have in there. Just like on the drill press. Exactly. They also have a tap guide on top. Can so I what, see that, Chuck? Yeah, I, can, I don't know if you guide. can get in there. It's pretty tough. It's a small little hole that's in the very top of the handle. But what it allows you to do, it allows you to put one of these in there. And it's called a tap guide. So when you're in your drill press, you can put this all together. Chuck this up in your drill press, and we're going to do that here in just a second, and we can go ahead and tap this hole. Well, this is cool. But another thing that people don't understand, if you don't have one of these, and you do have one of these out of your set that people seem to spend a lot of money on, that's okay too. You just want to make sure that the top of your tap also has the hole that this piece has. And you can use this guide to start it. Why is that important? Because you don't want the tap exaggerated to go in at an angle. Guilty. Yeah, and that's what happens to a lot of us when we try to hand tap or when we try to do it in the drill press. We're not aligned correctly. We get this moving around. Next thing you know, it, uh, you end up breaking it, and it snaps. The biggest problem when you're not doing a hole that is a through hole, meaning it goes all the way through the part, it's blind, which means it has a bottom to it. People will tap and tap and tap and tap and tap and tap. What happens is they build up what's called a bird's nest. A bunch of chips, oh, the chips. metal huh. shavings down huh. on the bottom, huh. and it binds the tap up, yeah. and we snap it. Best tip I can give you is never tap dry. Always try to tap with some type of lubricant. There's all sorts of things out there as far as what you can get. Cool tool, tap magic, coolant, but that's hard to find. WD-40? WD-40 works on aluminum and brass uh, copper really great. Yeah. If you don't have that, some simple motor oil. Motor oil. Huh. There you go. Huh. You know, unless you're at a machine shop and you're tapping daily, there's no reason to go out and buy that kind of right. stuff. Okay. This will work just fine for you. Okay. So what do you say we go over the drill press? Yeah, let's go check it out. Okay. Okay, so I got my vice. Okay. And now what? Okay. So for the majority of us on our drill presses, we don't have a reverse. Right. So power tapping like you would do in a machine shop on a mill is kind of out of the question. However, okay. we can still utilize this, and the beauty of it, this, this drill press is not perfectly square for you machinists out there, but for us at home, that's okay. All we're trying to do is chuck up the tap, and if you come in here a little bit, you can see that. We'll go ahead and, and guide it down so we can get the piece right where we want it into the hole, okay. lock everything down, lock our clamp down, and then we can go ahead and tap. Okay. Okay, and as I was saying earlier, so, we don't want to do this dry, so we've added a little bit of lubrication to it. Right. So now how do we tap? We can't sit here and just spin this. It just won't work. And you don't want to just turn the motor on. And you don't want to just turn the motor on. All sorts of bad things are going to happen. <laughs> so, so what kind of lubrication did you put in there, guys? Well, we added a little bit of motor oil, and we're not going to put it on there right now so you, it hampers of what we're actually trying to show you. 
But when we go to tap this, we are. So if I hand you the motor oil, Kevin, just put a little bit here on the old tap. If it will, there we go. Bring it down. Grab our key. And just keep tapping it down. Right now it's not tightened up very well, so we just give it a little bit more pressure. And we just keep a little bit of pressure on the handle and just walk this down. So you're not turning on the drill press at all? No, I'm not turning on the drill press at all. All I'm doing is just walking this down. And people are going, well, just fire up the drill press and just let it walk down and let it drift. You know, you can if you're really experienced. If you're not, bad things are going to happen. You can see that the tap has already started to thread down into the part. So now what we're going to do is just reverse. We've got it as deep as we want to go, and now we just go in reverse until it comes out. Oh, when I do this by hand, I have to you know, turn a, a quarter turn and then back up a little, and then turn a quarter turn and right. back and up a little. What you're doing is you're breaking the chip, and that's an excellent point that you're making. Yeah. What happens, do you have to do it here, too? It really does help. And the reason oh. it helps is that you get so many chips or metal shavings that what happens is it binds the tap, and the next thing you know, you're, you're forcing it, you're twisting it, and you've broken a tap. And that's what happens to a lot of us. And the majority of us try to use too small of a tap. They want it, they're so afraid that the right size, in this case, a 3 8 tap, is so hard to do, they use some little wimpy tap, which really doesn't fit their application, and those are actually easier to break. Huh. Much easier well, to break. Can, can I use a little tiny tap? This way? Yeah, it's a lot easier. Hand? Oh, much de most definitely. Huh. But the beauty of this is you can do this with almost any material. Even if it has a bottom to it, you can find the bottom. Yeah. And just the technique you've just described of going around it and dropping the key again. Well, you wouldn't want us to think you're perfect, would you, Chuck? Well, I, if anybody who knows me can tell you that I'm far from perfect. But once you actually get this going, you really don't even know to hold the handle anymore, and you can just go ahead and walk this around. Yeah. you got to remember the application of what you're doing is a thread, so that when it goes around, it'll stay going. Right. Do you have to go all the way to the bottom of the tap? No. They're, they're tapered, aren't they? No. This particular tap is not tapered, and you bring an excellent point. A tapered tap is usually something like a plug tap, and it's bad when you go all the way through with one of those. They have a, per, a precise depth of where you can go to, and if you don't know what you're doing, take it to a machine shop where yeah. they do. There you go. Well, how Tapped cool. Off. Yeah. Didn't break it. I threw the key down once. Well, well you, you did it. That's why it didn't break. So, maybe next time you can show us what this thing's for. Sure. Okay. Very cool. handy tool. All right. Well, let me get to work here. All right. We'll talk to you later. Thanks, buddy. See you.